Well, joining us now is writer and mum, Liz Fraser, and sports journalist, Georgie Bingham. I think we should come to you first of all, Georgie, probably. Hmm, is it all your fault, you sport lot? <laughs> Oh, wow, I can't believe you threw that one at me. It, it, do you know what? It's, it's, <laughs> very, it's, very difficult. it's very difficult to police language on, the, on any kind of physical activity. But we, under, we, are, we do understand that footballers uh, are under more scrutiny than ever because everything is played out in front of the cameras. There have been moves made to try and curb aggressive behaviour on the pitch towards, for example, referees. But I'm still of the I'm still of the um, of the belief that it's, it's incredibly hard to stop players swearing at each other in a physical but game. They, they seem to be able to do it in rugby. And well, in rugby, the referee walks you forward ten yards. If you if you swear at the referee, the referee will literally just walk forward ten yards, and you lose ten yards of possession. Well, there you go. You in see, football, so there is a red card rule, but it hasn't really been heavily implemented. And I do suspect that at the beginning of the football season, if three or four players got red carded for swearing at the referee, they would immediately. Um, start to pay attention to the rule that I don't think has been quite as enforced as it should be. The thing is, though, is, as, as you can hear it wherever you go, yeah. shopping, supermarkets, people are swearing, so youngsters are going to swear, so there we go. Is it just the malaise of our society? Well, people are swearing ever, ever more, and uh, you hear it, parents swearing more at home. I have to confess, I swear occasionally at home. I'm, I'm guilty of that. And what we have to remember, of course, is that children copy. Mm -hmm. They copy everything they hear, and they copy most of all from their parents when they're very little, before they start doing everything opposite to their parents. But if they have idols, if you idolise anybody, even if you're an adult, you copy that behaviour. And the children, I mean, you know, we've just had the Euros. My three children have watched every single match, I think, of the Euros, bar one. And you can lip read, you know what they're saying. There is a difference, by the way, I do hold the difference between, you know, missing a ball and having a swear and swearing at somebody. I think those are quite different uses the, of the swear words. The context of swearing. The context. But important. really, I, I am afraid I cannot agree with the argument which just says, well, you know, they're under a lot of scrutiny, they're under a lot of pressure, they swear. And, and for me, I think the football industry, it has to come from them. And I would love to see the manager of Chelsea or Man City, one of the big clubs, saying, we are going to be a swear-free zone. You will be off, you will miss a match. You know, set the example. Let's mm. just break this now and say, football is a family game. I was talking to somebody earlier she said she took her little her son to a football match that was the first time he came home and swore right. you know because that's where he heard it to be fair though that's that probably is a support this is exactly yeah. the pitch not for me so if you go yeah. to any grounds and even though there are family stands the language is very industrial and i yeah. think your children are far more likely to pay attention to that, I think. I mean, look, we had an incident last season where Wayne Rooney got fined for swearing straight into a camera after scoring a goal, mm. uh, after the whole kind of contract issue and everything like that. But, you know, and that is unacceptable. But I think if you play a very physical game and you play within the confines of a large pitch and you mutter and you curse at each other, it happens, unfortunately. Does I'm not sure you can... at all? It's just words, isn't it? Why should we care about it? Why should we care about it? Because I, I think most people would agree that there's a certain decorum and a certain nice way of behaving to one another. And, you know, we had for a while a rule where we said we can swear at home but not outside the house. It doesn't work because it becomes a, an automatic reaction. You know, the minute you drop something, oh, beep, you know, it comes out. And so as parents, we've got to, you know, try not to swear in front of our children. But I think for the footballing thing, absolutely. You know, if parents, if we're the ones shouting in the stands and effing and blinding in the stands, we have to get people to try and stop that. And I think that the football, you know, the whole football thing mm. it needs to come from the top and they have to make it cool not to behave like that. I mean, take David Beckham, for example, you know, he's always held up as a sort of the pinnacle of good behavior, but he, he is a great role model in that he doesn't swear on the pitch. He doesn't shout racist he, abuse he at people. He, do, he does swear on the pitch, but I mean, well, that's the point. It's, it's if you swear and are aggressive to referees yeah. on camera, I think that could be wiped out in football yes, easily. I I, think they could. I, I really think right, yeah. a couple of red cards yeah. and people would start that to pay attention. It would be interesting to see yeah. what effect that would have. Going well, exactly. Yes. It might then filter into yeah. families and, and children and everything. Might come down to just discipline and respect as well. It's always yes. good to have a bit of that around. Thanks very much indeed. Oh, thank, thank you. you both.